Hello, and welcome to another video by John Canavan, sponsored by JC Solar Homes. Today I'll be talking about the latest improvements on my low-cost universal differential controller, also known as a thermostatic controller. Most of us are familiar with a household static thermostat used to maintain a constant temperature inside a house. Thermostats use simple bimetallic strips to sense temperature. Since all metals expand at a different rate, bimetallic strips move in proportion to temperature changes. Both thermostats and differential controllers are used to regulate pumps, but household thermostats respond to one temperature and differential controllers respond to two temperatures. This is an important concept to understand for solar heating applications. The sun can supply us with more than enough heat for hot water and home heating, but sunlight is a diffuse, intermittent resource, so its energy must be stored for a time when it's needed. We could flip a switch to turn on a pump and circulate water through collectors every time the sun is out, but what would happen if we're not home? To be practical, the process of storing solar heat should be automated. This is the job of the differential controller. A PV panel is sometimes used to regulate the flow rate of a circulator in a closed loop system. Unfortunately, the heat available for collection is not always proportional to sunlight intensity and PV power. The intermittent nature of sunlight can cause circulators to come on before a collector warms up. When the sun ducks behind a cloud for a minute, heat collection stops even if the collector is hot. Open loop systems using PV power alone are the worst. They require minimum power for minimum head pressure. For this reason, open loop control systems are at best unstable without a differential controller and a battery backup. Automating the process of solar heat collection is facilitated by automating the on and off cycles of a pump. There are a variety of differential controllers to choose from. Some not only regulate the pump on and off cycles, but they also display collector and storage temperatures. Some have freeze and boil protection, and some are designed for AC applications only. The universal basic differential controllers may be used to regulate either AC or DC pumps. Reg Richard Helliger and I have experimented with numerous controller designs used successfully in the United States, Canada, New Mexico, Mexico, Great Britain, Australia, Italy, and many other countries and states all over the world. But today I want to talk about our universal basic controller that has recently become very popular. The BDC was developed out of a need to be practical and low cost and easy to use and rugged. The basic differential controller improvements include a polarity protection diode that prevents accidents due to reversing the DC polarity, a heat available indicator lamp to facilitate the differential adjustment, and an increased differential range from minus 5 to plus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. To simplify the adjustment, a single pot is used to integrate the differential on and differential off temperatures of the pump. A counterclockwise setting maximizes the heat harvest and a clockwise adjustment maximizes power conservation. The best setting is a balance between these two extremes. The only time that a pot would be turned totally counterclockwise would be to force the pump on when the collector and storage temperatures are the same. A total clockwise adjustment is done to minimize the pump on time when the house is left vacant for long periods of time. Normally, the best adjustment is accomplished when the red heat available indicator lamp and the green pump indicator lamp go out at the now same time. Now we understand time. how a differential controller works so let's see one in action. This one uses the same DC power for the pump as it does for the controller. Instead of a pump, we'll activate a white light. Here's the, uh, <laughs> here's the white light. Okay, so this represents our pump. 
So when that goes on, you, you know the pump is on. And we also have an indicator that's on our controller right here, this green light. When this green light comes on, that also means that the pump has been activated. Now, besides that, you can see right next to the green light, we have a red light. Now, this red lamp is used to indicate the amount of heat that's available for collection. And the, the brighter it gets, the more heat there'll be uh, for collection. And we're going to use that light to make our adjustment on the controller. This is the differential pot adjustment. And um, what we'll be doing is uh, the adjustment is for the uh, difference in temperature between the collector and storage. And these probes here are used to sense the temperature. This one senses the temperature in the collector and this one senses the temperature in the storage. Now we also have a meter here. We don't, we're not connecting it to anything right now. But let's take a look right now at the reference voltage that's going into our probes. You can see the, uh, the reference voltage coming in to our collector probe is 5 volts and the reference voltage for the storage probe is 0 or ground. And the voltage in between here should be about halfway when both probes are the same temperature. And right now, you can see they are both at the same temperature. Okay, so what we're interested in mostly for collecting a, a net heat gain uh, from the sun is a, uh, a difference in temperature between collector and storage. We don't really care what the actual temperature is, but as long as there's heat available, we want to turn our pump on and collect that heat. And how much heat we collect, we can adjust with our differential pot. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, plug our voltage probe into the uh, common junction of our temperature probes so I won't have to uh, poke around anymore. This is the main thing we're going to be concerned with. So. Uh, first thing we want to do, let's say we want to uh, see if our pump is actually working, but the uh, the temperatures of our probes are, are both the same, so it's not going to come on. We can force this to come on by turning our differential pot counterclockwise. See? We turn it totally counterclockwise, it, it forces the pump to come on. But uh, under normal operating conditions, we don't want this to happen. As a matter of fact, let, let's just take a look and see what happens if we turn it the other way. Okay, it comes off, but I'm going to continue to turn it. I'm going to turn it all the way clockwise. Okay, this means that it's going to take a lot of heat to turn this pump on. Okay, now let's see what happens when we add heat to our collector probe. Okay, you can see the voltage has gone up here, it's 2.6, and the more heat I add, the brighter our uh, heat indicator lamp gets. Right now, that, that uh, voltage represents a difference in uh, temperature of about uh, 16 degrees or so. Uh, for every uh, tenth of a volt, that, that represents a, a temperature gain of about three degrees. Okay, let's let's add some more heat. We're up to 3.3 uh, volts. The pump still hasn't come on. All right. Now, at uh, 3.6 volts, the pump comes on, and at 3.3 uh, volts, the pump goes off. So, uh, and that's uh, the, the differential temperature to turn the pump on is about 30 degrees, and the pump goes off at about uh, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 degrees or so. Okay, uh, now we've replaced our temperature probes with a little test fixture, and we can actually dial simulated differential temperatures. Right now the simulated differential temperature is minus 10. We can turn it up to zero, and uh, you can see the 
the green light really hasn't come on yet. The, uh, the heat indicator lamp is just starting to come on. Okay, let's continue to add heat and see what happens. Alright, it's getting pretty bright. Eventually the pump should come on. Alright, and it does come on at a differential of 18 degrees. Can you see the you see the 20 here? It's just a little less than 20. So it's just about 18 degrees. Now let's see where the where it comes off. Okay, it's getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Alright, it goes off at uh, 9 degrees. Okay, uh, now there's still some heat left in our uh, controller, so we'd like to adjust this so that um, to get that a little closer to uh, to zero. In other words, a zero differential. We don't really want zero, but about five degree differential would be good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so uh, this is how you would adjust it. Uh, notice now that the differential is minus 10. It's not going to come on there. Let's see how hot uh, or how high the temperature has to be. Um, that isn't really the right term. How uh, high the differential temperature should be. In other words, how much higher should the collector probe be than the storage probe in order to turn the pump on. Okay, you can see right now we're up to about 11 degrees, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, just about 15 degrees the pump comes on and we'll turn this back down and just about 5 degrees the pump comes off. Now this is a pretty good setting. Okay, uh, there's one other feature I wanted to show you about this controller. It's a safety feature. Uh, you know that these uh, probes, uh, they, they could be quite long, especially the collector probe. Um, the extension wires could be like 50 feet long. And there's always that slight chance that the, uh, you, you might short out the probe someplace along the line. Uh, so we don't want, it, want anything bad to happen. So I, I, there's a, a safety feature built into this that limits the amount of current that goes through the probe. Uh, and that's done through a voltage regulator that, that limits the current. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to short out the collector probe by just putting this screwdriver uh, right on the probes and you'll see what happens. All right, it, it's the uh, 5 volt reference is shorted to the common junction, so it turns the, the pump on. But you can see there's no damage done to the controller or to the probes. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to short out the storage probe. Uh, now you won't see anything because we're just shorting this out to, to ground. That, that's what would happen if you shorted out the uh, storage probe. Uh, so you don't see anything. But if we turn this on, let's turn it on first. Now we're shorted out. You can see it turns the pump off. But in either case, uh, there's no damage done to the controller or to the probes. Uh, that's basically what I wanted to show you. Um, and uh, my best wishes uh, for all your solar heating projects from JC Solar Homes. Thank you very much. came along and picked the clouds from my mind I could have sworn you'd turn the water into wine And now I'm chasing dreams but falling far behind But that's all fine Who am I to change things now? The veil's been lifted, now I'm looking at your face but I can't help to think it's not the time or place I'd hate to call fate's bluff and make a huge mistake But that's okay Who am I to change things now? Who am I to change the way things have been? To dive a little deeper in the pool that we fell in I only hope I 
I don't live long enough to regret what I'm missing. The whispers grew into a deafening young roar. The tables turned, but in whose favor I'm not sure. And now time's beating out of rhythm at our door, but that's alright. Who am I to change things now? Who am I to change the way things have been? To dive a little deeper in the pool that we fell in. I only hope I don't live long enough to regret what I'm missing.